Okay, guys, let's get going. Um, I've uh, there's a few of our good friends in the background, some very good sailors amongst them. That's an offshore race. Um, yeah, that's my birthday trip, actually. But enough of that, although uh, this lot remind me of why we're doing the session tonight, which is collision regulations. Um, and I need to take my mind off things because earlier, just about half an hour ago, I was coming back in the car, first time out in the car since the lockdown, and ran into my ex-wife, which was okay because I then reversed and ran over her again. So uh, anyway, I need, need to take my mind off things. Collision regulations come into to play even when you run over your wife. So let's get a little um, start with a slide up here. And uh, let's have a little look at what we can do. Here we go. Here's a little bit of collision regulations coming in. That's your, that's your starting slide. Oh, A level one and two collision regulations. We won't talk about what's going on there right now. However, we'll come back to that in a minute. So, a little recap on last week. This was uh, point of sale here, where we've got close haul beam reaches and broad reaches. But the conundrum last week was this slide, where if we have a little look, we've got close hauled on starboard here. We're close hauled on starboard. And the conundrum was, why can we have a close hauled on starboard, but on port tack, which is, this is port, sorry, other way round. Close hauled on port over here. this side, that's port. And this is starboard. And this one here was only a close reach. The diagram is just using uh, the space on the drawing. You can be close hauled, close reaching, beam reaching, or broad reaching, beam reaching, broad reaching on either tack, on starboard or port. It's just the way this drawing, this diagram is drawn. And that proves a little conundrum. I think we sorted it out. But just to recap, we are close hauled here, sails hauled in, beam reach here, sails probably halfway out, and a broad reach here where the sails go out even further, and dead run here, which again, we've probably got one sail out this side and one sail out the other side on our dinghies. This one shows a big spinnaker sail around the front of the boat. So just a little uh, quick recap on what we do, what we've been doing. There are your points of sale. Um, we'll erase those and we'll move on to collision regulations. Now, these are regulations for all of us, wherever we are, in any boat, wherever we are in the world, there will be collision regulations and they all apply at all times. There are a few nuances when we start to um, move on to racing. Things change a little bit every now and again, but not these definite, solid four or five. So collision regulations. We've talked about which is port over here. Um, that is four letters, port. Same as left-hand side, L-E-F-T, four letters. Starboard is the other side, and they're usually either green for starboard and red for port. Um, I don't know whether you can spot the obvious mistake in this drawing, but this guy here is sitting on the wrong side of the boat. He would have to be sitting over here to balance the wind in those sails. Uh, either can I tip the boat over that way if he hasn't got his balance out. So we did, we did our five essentials, that's one of them balance in the boat to stop it heeling over and possibly capsizing. Okay. Um, starboard on the right hand side, port on the left. And going on to this next one, we've got the wind always coming down the, from the top of the screen. Um, boat on the left, 
where the guy is sitting on the wrong side in port tack. So the wind is coming over the left hand side, the port side of the boat, the sails are out. You're usually sitting out on the port side of the boat over here. Um, you, well, you should be to balance the boat as we've just said. Should be sitting there. And on the other tack starboard, he is sitting in the right position to balance the boat. Um, he's sitting on starboard, but your sails are out to port when you're on starboard tack. So I think we've got that kind of covered now. Where is port? Where is starboard? And therefore, what tack you're on? Now then, this is the. Uh, it's important because of the next couple of slides. So, what have we got here? Wind from the top again. Boat A, we should all know now he's on, on port tack. Wind is coming over the red left port side of the boat. Okay. And boat B is on starboard. So what we have here is the first and most important rule. Although, let's go back one. Collision regulations. The most important rule, number one, is avoid collision at all times. Just remember that for the next couple of slides. You have to avoid collision at all times. So boat B is on starboard, boat A is on port, and the next regulation, number two, is that port is the giveaway boat, starboard is what we call the stand-on boat. So starboard boat has rights. The right of way, if you want, call it stand on. He can keep going. Port has to give way and keep clear of the starboard boat in this instance. Reasonably clear. So what A is doing is he's ducking. He's bearing away, turning to the right and ducking down behind B. Um, of course, there, he, he has another option which is to go here and tack. So he ends up over there here, close hauled again. So he's tacked and turned away. That would keep him clear of B, but because they're that close in this diagram, he's probably gonna slow down, let his sails out and go behind because that's the direction he was going in. Okay, so this one's borne away, but you have to make a decision being the keep clear boat the give way boat and avoid collision with B. So B stays carrying on on his course until he's absolutely sure that A has probably not seen him. If A hasn't seen him and sometimes, especially sitting in that boat, the wrong side, therefore behind the sail, you can't always see a starboard boat coming in. So B, if he thinks that A hasn't seen him, goes back to rule number one, avoids in collision at all times, and would have thought back here probably, oh, he hasn't seen me, I'm going to tack, or I'm going to slow down and go behind him. Okay? The important thing for you to remember here is B on starboard tack is the stand-on vessel, and A on port tack is the give way. Okay. Get rid of this. Get rid of my little mess. And we'll move on to the next slide, which is boat A and boat B. Now then, can we tell which tack, let's start with A at the bottom, is on? Yeah, wind coming over the starboard side of the boat. So therefore, or wind, as it says, it says here, it's coming over this side of the boat. Starboard, what have we learnt? Starboard is the stand-on boat. Um, a and B, which side is the wind coming over on B? Hope you'll all agree that that's also the starboard side of the boat. So two boats on starboard. Now then, what happens here? Collision regulation number three, upwind boat, the boat that's closer to the wind is the give way and the downwind boat here is the stand on. We call them the windward, boat B is to wind, or windward of boat A, and boat A is to leeward 
in the lee of boat B. Leeward, L-E-W-E, W-A-R-D, leeward, it's pronounced leeward. So rule number three here, the upwind boat, the windward boat is the giveaway boat in this instance. So today he can stand on and carry on where he's going. Now why, I hear you ask, why is this convention one of the collision regulations? Well, boat B is getting the wind first and will have control. Boat A in this situation possibly hasn't got any wind, even though his sail is shown to be out and flying. There may not be any wind, he may not have the opportunity to manoeuvre the boat. So convention number three or collision regulation number three is the windward boat keeps clear, gives way. Okay, we're so happy with that. We'll have a couple more little um, rules and regs here now. Um, let's erase our wind coming over. There we go. And we move on to the next one now. That's what he should have done. Almost definitely going downwind, boat B, which is the giveaway boat, will bear away again and jibe, or bear away and duck behind A. Okay, what are the other options? He could come up and start turning up into the wind to keep clear and do something like that, but that takes a long time. He should have anticipated this situation much further back and start bearing away to go behind. This is quite a heavy duck, a very late duck to start bearing away here. That's a collision, the way these boats are drawn. But at least they're both sitting on the right side now. So we've got that. So he's borne away and ducked behind boat A because he was to windward of the other boat. Now then, can you tell me which side of the boat the wind's coming over on each of those? Yeah, the wind's coming over the right-hand side of each boat. So they're both what we call on the same tack. Boats on the same tack, the windward boat keeps clear. The leeward boat has the opportunity to stand on and keep going. Okay, what have we got next? Ah, an overtaking situation. Boat A is overtaking boat B. And so therefore the overtaking boat rule, collision rule number four probably, and there are only four at the moment that are really important. It'll cover every situation. Boat A is the giveaway boat. Boat B can carry on going. A can go either side and must keep clear of boat B, which is the stand on boat. Lovely. Let's have a little look at what we've got next. Here we go. Here's an interesting one. Well, boat A now is coming up below boat B, so he's the leeward boat. Boat B is to windward and can carry on. Okay, and this one illustrates what A mustn't do. It, even though he has rights over boat B, boat B is the give way. Boat A can stand on because he's to leeward. Boat A cannot tack up into B. As soon as you start tacking, and he's now going into the, what we call the no-go zone. So the no-go zone might be here. Boat A is turning up into it. His sail is now flapping. So until he gets right across to the other side and is now what we call close hauled again on this tack, He's then the port boat. The wind is coming over this side. And port must give way to starboard. So what he's doing here, tacking up towards B, is very silly and will probably cause a collision um, and has no rights. So even though he had rights before he tacked, once he started tacking up towards B, he has no rights when the winds come out of his sail. Okay, even if he completes the tack in plenty of time and he gets onto port tack, he still has no rights because B is on starboard. So a bit to take in there. 
you're happy with that? We'll have some questions in a minute. Let's have a little look at this. Boat A and boat B. Anybody else have a little look at that and work out what happens between boat A and B? What tax A on? Winds coming over the port side, I suggest to you. Oh, I'll put some colours in here. Wind is coming here. And that's his port side, left hand side of the boat. Whereas B is obviously green and starboard. Okay, so go back to rule number two after the clean rate, which says the first and most important avoid collision at all times. Boat B is the stand on boat here, and boat A is the giveaway boat. So his options are again to get out, has to get out of the way, probably a bit close here. Should have thought about it before. He can jibe away, turn this way and jibe. His sail has to come all the way across to the other side, or he can tack up that way. Now, tacking up that way is quite a long way to go. Um, you'll judge when you get in your boats and you get a feel of them, hopefully in, not, in the not too distant future, will work out, you will have an idea of what you might do. And you will do it nice and early to avoid collision. So, you've got boat B, the stand-on boat. Boat A is give way. Let's give you another boat here. So, there's another boat coming up here. Close hauled into the wind. These guys are broad reach in A and B. Boat C is coming up into the wind. Um, what do you think C has to do with relation to A? C is on what tack? Again, let's say the wind's coming over here, left hand side, port side. C is on port tack. A, we've already said, is on port. B is on starboard. Port down here for C. But C is downwind of A. So the second rule comes in between A and C. The windward boat A has to give way to C, who's stand on. And what happens between C and B? Well, here we go. Port for C, starboard for B. C has to keep clear of B. So C has give way, is, has rights, as we call them. Is stand on over A, but it has to keep clear of B. So B's in a good position because he's upwind, but who's in the best position if I add another boat here? Sorry, dodgy drawing. D. Now D in this instance is going upwind, close hauled on starboard tack, wind coming over the right hand side. And he's also downwind of all the A and B. So D has rights over every single one there. Now, hopefully this is not a situation that ever occurs with what we've got going on. All four of those boats are doing that at the same time because uh, they should have reacted much, much earlier before they get to that situation. Otherwise there's gonna be chaos and a collision right in the middle here. Okay. So, a lot to think about. Um, I basically have a little look at, uh, as soon as I've tapped or jived, I know instinctively, or I ask myself a question, if, I, if I'm in a busy situation out in the water, and I make sure I know what tack or jive I'm on, and whether I'm upwind or downwind of other boats. So I'm kind of, it's going on in the back of my mind. Um, when you're sailing in pairs, um, the instructors have got out of the boats, always good to have the crew thinking about it one of you will be helming the other one will be crewing in the front moving the jib from one side to the other when we're tacking and jibing playing with the center board all part of our five essentials and it's always good to have the crew and other ears and eyes out of the boat saying yeah look we're on port we've got to be a bit careful well we're okay here we're on starboard so what will you do if you get into a situation, 
such as A and B are here. There's a port and starboard situation. What will you do if you think that the other boat hasn't seen you? Or well, certainly B, who's on starboard, will be shouting really loud and really early, starboard, just to wake A up so they know they have to give, up, give way. Don't be scared to shout at any other boat when you think you have rights or you'll stand on the boat. You have to let them know. You cannot just drive into them with rights on starboard because the first rule is avoid collision at all times. Okay? So starboard shout loud and early. Good. Moving on, what I wanted to do now is go through just very quick upwind, downwind. Now, we'll, we'll, I think we'll leave this one for now because we're running out of time a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you very quickly here. Before we go on to that, we'll leave you with this little slide. This is a toe out to the beginning of uh, a session. There's the River Thames behind our, our boat, boat house is down below there, our pontoon. Well, pointed out to you now, but this is us towing up river to find some nice wind for a session. Um, probably the first thing you'll be doing, you can see there's people leaning out there with their heads out. That shows how stable these boats are. But what I wanted to talk about very briefly here towards the end of this session is the collision regulations with regard to other water users. So what do we think that means? What have we got going up and down the river or anywhere? Wherever you are, there's uh, bound to be some other water users that aren't sailing necessarily. So let's look at speedboats, little launches, coaching rowers, or even what I call a gin palace, a bigger speedboat with the old people sitting out on deck drinking gin and just motoring up and down the river. So who do you think has rights? Sailboats or Boats under power, small boats under power. Yes, you'd be right to say sailboats will have rights over these power boats. And why? Because they can manoeuvre. Ideally, you may not have wind, you may have very little wind. They are more manoeuvrable than you, so they must get out of your way and keep clear. But again, don't trust them to. They may not have seen you. Shout really loud and early. It's the general rule to avoid collision. Now, what about a big boat? Going down the middle of that river, we have at times passenger boats, party boats, big, long, thin things, most of them. Some of them have even been back there around from the 1930s, old gentlemen's yachts converted. Did the Dunkirk run quite a lot of them? And they'll be going up and down the middle of that river. Now, that river is classed as what we call a narrow channel. Even if those big boats could stop or turn, to do so with the tide and the width of that river, they may very well get washed into the bank. So they're not expected to get out of our way. Um, we must keep clear of all the big power cruisers, party boats going up and down that river. They are what we call restricted in their ability to maneuver in a narrow channel and we must give way to them. Some of them are good, some of them will stop, some of them will slow down but they will not turn to avoid you because that will risk their boat. So be very wary of the big power boats going down the river. What else have we got on the river? Well, rowers for a start. So what do we think? the collision regulations pertaining to between a rower and a sailing boat is on the river. So a little think, who's more manoeuvrable? Well, you would say the rower. They can stop. Sailors take a while to stop. We can turn if we've got wind. We could avoid if we have wind to go around them. But what happens if we've got no wind? The rower is more manoeuvrable, or even though they're not that manoeuvrable because they're long and thin as well. So ideally we have rights over rowers on the river, but 
The Port of London Authority seem to interpret this rule in a different way. They say they are in a narrow channel and a sailing boat must keep clear. I won't go into detail now, and I do think they're wrong. Um, we're having this argument as we speak. But rowers, even if they have got rights of way over sailing boats, they don't know it, so don't tell them. The answer is avoid collision. Really early, big shout, rowers. And they will generally stop and hear. But of course, some of them are going backwards. They're not looking over their shoulders. They're out for a little poodle down the river. Bit of fun. They don't look back quite a lot of the time. So it's up to us to shout really loud and in good time to keep clear of rowers. Okay, just to finish off here, guys, I'm just going to whiz through um, a few slides here. I'll be going through them in more detail next week, but just uh, to whiz through what we're going to do, we're going to look at um, some capsize drills next week. So this is the guys going out first thing, an early session. You can see the tow rope from the boat. Here we go. Here's a couple learning to tack. He's pushing that tiller away from him and is tacking round, hopefully. Oh, actually, that looks more like a jibe, but it's so therefore he's got the, the tiller extension, which he's holding in his hand slightly in the wrong position, but he looks like he's trying to jibe. Interesting. Next one, hmm, he's still not jibed. That sails on the, on, the, on the other side. So perhaps slowly he was going through a jibe. You can see on the bottom right, the safety boat there, probably talking him through it. And across the other side, the gin palace. But we must uh, shout loud and early at as well because they're probably drunk in their cabin. Anticipate that. What have we got here? Here we go, three students. So most of these shots are taken uh, with a bunch of youths, as we say, but they'll be doing exactly the same thing as you. Um, when we start off, the chap in the back there will be an instructor to start off, give you a joyride, and two of you up the bow, the front of the boat, uh, looking bored there. But this one is obviously in level two now. He's about to jive, and they're all students. That is an instructor in the boat. But that you can see what's going on. These guys in the front will be shifting that front sail, the jib, from side to side as he turns the boat. So a little inkling of what you're up to. RYA level one and two capsized drill. There's me on the top there. We won't dwell on that one for too long. Um, I can assure you that uh, I had some students somewhere. No idea where they are in that shot. We'll come back to that. Here is one of our old instructors, that's Jesus. Um, looking like he needs a bit more weight on the rail. Those girls are a bit small. He's looking worried about uh, whether they're gonna capsize that boat. Don't worry, he's under complete control. Or is he? Now we're having a bit of a chat and a bit of fun. Um, young lady in the middle should probably have a weight over sitting next to Jesus to balance the boat. Although someone in that boat is doing something behind her. And that's a little, very small girl. And uh, this is what happened. So the instructor there, Jesus, sitting on the top of the boat. He stayed dry. He's gone over the top. And now he's expecting the smallest girl we've ever taught to try and pull that boat up. See how she gets along. Well, he's given her a little bit of help with his weight. She's walking out onto the end of the centerboard there and grabbing hold of what we call a lifeline and I think about to try and pull that boat up. She's now standing right on the end. You can see the crew down in the water there. Um, put all her weight out on the end. How she's doing that without hanging onto a rope, I don't know, but interesting techniques. And um, they've got the boat back up. One's in the water, always swimming to the back of the boat, which is lower than the rest. And so now she can be pulled in unceremoniously by grabbing that buoyancy aid. But we'll go through these in a bit of detail next week. Just give you a taste of what's happening. And then we're all going home. Everyone very happy. Everyone had a good day out on the river. Okay, guys, we're going to end it there. Um, we'll come to you for any questions now. But uh, other than that, thanks for, thanks for looking in. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks a lot.